Um, All right, let's go live. Um, so, uh, yeah, uh, in front of the Hangout Scrum uh, for the Take Me Away project. Mira, or perhaps Patrick and Michelle will join us. Uh, so, how, 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 how have you been? Well, uh, I'm all right. I had a pretty good day. Um, quite productive at work. Let's see. And um, in terms of uh, Take Me Away, I'm well, yesterday I was working on setting up coveralls, I mean, test coverage on the project, which I managed to do. And um, what's left to do is for you to add that to the, to coveralls. And then I'll just merge that to them. Yeah, to the we can do that in today's meeting together, perhaps, and I can set you up with that. Yeah, but besides that, uh, merge a couple, well, I looked at, your pull request today and I haven't merged them yet, but uh, we'll probably do that today mm -hmm. uh, during this meeting and um, work on the on the menu display on the front end application. Mm -hmm. Cool. So, um, so, uh, yeah. so it's the menu display story that you are focusing on. Uh, Right now, uh, is, is yes, uh, I want to get that out of the way as soon as possible. <laughs> yeah. okay. That's good. Anything blocking you? Um, not at the moment. Uh, the, the only blocker, but it wouldn't really be a blocker because um, it would be the API endpoint, but I can still like have a dumb JSON file that I could use to test my stuff. So it's not okay. really a blocker for me. Yeah, I, I can get you, uh, you know, the a fixture file if you need it. You know, with yes, yes, that that we that will be very helpful to, okay. to can, get we started. Can, we can work on that. I was actually going to ask about it. Okay. Okay, let's, I'm just going to make a note. Mm -hmm. We can do that during the uh, uh, the menu, Jason. Sure. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, right. Hey, Patrick. Uh, hello, Patrick. Hello. Hi, Ro. Hi, Thomas. So, uh, uh, you want to go? Uh, you know, the three scrum questions. What's up? What's your plans? And is there anything blocking you? <laughs> what was that last one? If, if there's a blocker, if you. Oh. Yeah. yeah. Um. Today I haven't had a lot of time, but I just did start to look at uh, image manipulation and file attachment gems, starting to uh, maybe develop a few criteria that we might want to use to make a decision. Looking at carry, the big ones like carry wave, obviously in paperclip, nifty attachments, dragonfly, um, things like that. So I've really just started. I hope to have something more to report possibly tomorrow. All right. No blockers. Uh, one, one. No blockers. Okay. I just wanted to point that that uh, Sam Pretty requested today to work on that. So maybe you can also coordinate with him and and maybe you you two can work together on that that story. Sure. Okay. Sure. So we have to take into consideration that there seems to be a little lag uh, between us, mostly because we are spread out all over the world. Uh, so there is seem to be like a second or something like so sometimes we cut into each other's uh, uh, you know sentences so it's it's not because the root of the rudeness it's just because of the land right point the land. I, I was watching the recording from the last dev meeting and it seems like you know uh, there was a, a almost a second or perhaps two seconds delay sometimes mm -hmm. uh, so I, I've not, been I having not, a bad Go ahead. Internet connection lately, yeah. So maybe that's also one of the reasons uh, that we're having that lag. Yeah. So it's not because we we are rude to each other. So that's different. I just wanted to give that up. <laughs> so yeah, okay. So uh, my turn. Cool. Then. I uh, I've been working on the uh, uh, on the menu workflow uh, from the, the administrative user interface perspective, and then when I finish that, I. Moved over and finished the the 
menu API endpoint with whatever info we have now. So I submitted two pull requests. Um, and uh, yeah, that's it. And after that, I've been playing around with doing some research on on, uh, on Active Admin, how, how we can manipulate and you know uh, customize the views of Active Admin. Uh, uh, there's a lot of you know pitfalls, and it's it's like learning a, a new, uh, almost a new no, not language, but there are some settings that you have to play around with. Basically, so uh, uh, let me show my screen. I just wrote mm -hmm. some stuff that I've done. Uh, just as a small thing, it's easy to do. Yeah, yeah so if I do it. So one one small thing is you see here at the bottom of the of the screen we have this powered by active admin uh, link for instance and while I was mm -hmm. playing around with some stuff I figured out uh, and that's why I wrote a score uh, how we can you know put some edge adventures uh, you know look or at least some edge adventures information on the on the screen so I did a uh, uh, small change here that says oh, so, so again. Uh, I haven't put it out or anything I just wanted to hear your your input on it it's a very small thing but, uh, so I put this by okay. Edge Adventures and decide source code is licensed under the MIT license uh, in the footer and okay. the interesting part is that so uh, I do this the active admin initializer uh, here in the config uh, directory so I created this uh, this uh, um, uh, this method that overrides the, the, the default behavior of active admin in you know it's an active admin component called mm -hmm. my footer and here's the paragraph that I use okay. uh, for render that information and then uh, on the uh, in the configuration I just call this footer uh, uh, you know, instead of the regular footer and this is just to showcase that there's a lot of stuff that we can actually uh, customize uh, on, on the in the view you know. And I also put a link here to Agile Ventures that that's just for play, so I can take it take it away, you know. Uh, and that one <laughs> that change is done, I think, on the dashboard. Yeah. Uh, uh, nope. It's not the dashboard. What did I put? It was also also in the initializer. Uh, da -da -da. Yeah. Here, you know, you can add a. a a menu that will show on all on all uh, pages, basically. You know, so I don't know if you want to keep this or not. It, I, I did it to like a, you know just to, to spike something up, uh, but I would say that this could be interesting well, for us to to have there. Well, I think the the, the footer already is uh, is kind of like enough for for this. I yeah. The the menu, the menu link there is a bit too much. I think. Yeah, so I understand. It might interfere with the, the usage of the yeah. application. Yeah. So I would I would say you're you're right there. So. Well, at least it's good, it's good to know that we can do such things, right? Yeah. Um, so let me just uh, comment this out, and uh, yeah. So I'm going to create a patch. Uh, uh, you know, uh, pull request on this. All right, cool. Um, awesome. Yeah. How did you make out with testing, Active uh, Admin? Not, I haven't worked on it today, actually. Okay. Uh, 
So he decided to put to ignore that folder completely. Yeah. So it's not covered anymore by our test coverage calculations. <laughs> uh <-huh. Yeah. laughs> Which is a <clears throat> lazy man's way to reach uh, high uh, test coverage. But <laughs> include all all the folders, and we are on hundred percent basically. But uh, this is just for the time being. Cool. So anyway, yeah. Uh, let me. So perhaps, uh, Raul, if you would like to share your screen, we could. Um, um, you know, we could. You could jump over to some pivotal tracker, and we could vote for. All right. Cool. Doing that just now. So also, just in in the meantime, while you're doing this, uh, and this is to for, for you when you host a hangout, uh, you know, if you click on any of the of on on, for instance, if if me and Patrick are in the hangout, if you click on our icons or avatars or video, mm -hmm. that's that is what is being recorded. If none of the avatars is selected, then the hangout jumps back and forward from to whoever speaks at the moment. You know, so sometimes. When okay. Sometimes. Going yeah. Go ahead. Um, sometimes I do that, but then I find myself with uh, with someone else screen later on during the recording. I don't know okay. why, but um, oh, oh. well, yeah. you, you get that. Okay. You, you want to avoid, you yeah. know, the, the screen jumping back and forward from from. Whoever is, is currently speaking. Right now, I'm locked on your screen, for instance. So that, that your screen is the one that's being recorded. But I, know. I think it's a good. Okay. All right. Cool. I'll I'll keep that in mind for future recordings. Absolutely. Okay. Okay. All right. Pivotal tracker. Let's see. Mm hmm. Okay, so this you already took care of this sort of. Um, so Thomas, are we that many already that we can't see? Once <laughs> again, you have to scroll to see everyone now. No, I was just I was just surprised that we are that many that we have to scroll down. Ah. Okay. So maybe you can click start on this so that you can once you submit the patch you'll yeah. submit that. Okay. Um, the next thing is the well I've assigned the image to Sampriti. Uh, yeah, Patrick can also Patrick, yeah. add you to yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah. That'd be great. Thanks. When did uh, Sampriti so then you took him. Several. I was he wondering reached where? out to me during during the day. Okay, I didn't see that on the channel, but I guess. Okay. <laughs> yeah, it was a private conversation. Ah. So. Might be good to make the public <laughs> all aware of what's going on. Yeah. You know. Yeah, but basically that's what this this okay. is for. Hi, Michelle. How are you doing? Good. Are you guys able to hear me? I can't tell if I'm muted. Uh, we can. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, cool. Thank you. Sorry to hear about you, Elvis. I hope you get well soon. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, you should recover very soon. We need we need some more some more hands on taking me away. Yeah. Well, I may be. I may have very little else to do. So. So are you are you basically on a sick leave right now, Michelle, or what's up? Um, no, I'm gonna go. I'm probably gonna go to the hospital tomorrow and get a chest X-ray. Um, it's something. It's really common. Like if you've had one before, mm -hmm. it's common to get them again. It's just this weird thing where spontaneously your lung will collapse. I think it's probably from the pressure change flying. Mm -hmm. um, I just need to make sure that I'm okay to fly home with it. But other than that, it just makes you a little bit tired and it hurts a little bit, but it's not too crazy. You know, sometimes when I you know, when I had a cold and I fly, my ears pop, or, you know, it hurts a lot, and I thought yeah. that was awesome, and then, then I hear a picture of <laughs> collapsing, you know, and I was like, God, I'm lucky, you know, I really, 
this and this was being horrible. Yeah. But did, did did you did you sense it while you were flying already, or did, did it come afterwards? No, not, you don't notice it at all in, at the moment. Well, I noticed it on the drive home, but not on the plane. Okay. Uh, okay. And I would shit my pants if I felt something like that on the plane. You know, so, yeah. It's nice that I've actually had it before at home, so it's not as scary. Okay. All right. Well, anyway, I hope you get to it better soon. So. Thank you. Did I cut you off there? Patrick, you were saying something? Patrick, you were saying something? I was just saying, was just saying well, thank goodness she was not flying the plane when that happened. <laughs> <laughs> On a lot of fronts. <laughs> right. Okay, looks like we only have about two... Two stories to work to vote on right now, like the create or the endpoint. The workflow itself, I'm not too sure if we we don't need to create. What do we need to do in the story, really? Uh, in order to deliver right orders to my client, I'd like to access all the information in the admin interface. All right, okay. Yeah, so this is like um, you know. I, I, the, Okay, these two stories are, are, are of course connected to each other, but you know, if if we have another endpoint in the API, uh, then of course uh, the admin should also be able to see those orders in his uh, mm -hmm. yeah. in his okay. uh, nice. admin interface. So, and then what we should what we can talk about in this story that you have open right now, uh, the order workflow, is whether we uh, we should allow the admin to create orders in the active admin interface. Mm -hmm. uh, and the reason for that could be that, you know, he can have walk-ins um, and, uh, you know, that there could be some use cases for, uh -huh. for, yeah. for him. Uh, and also, just, just a, a, a few comments about that. The thing here is with in Sweden, I spoke to, to the client about this briefly, and we bumped into, into each other in the corridor. Uh, the, the, the legislation in Sweden requires of, of him to have a cashier, uh, you know, a register uh, in, in the uh, proximity, you know, in the venue, right? If he's doing, mm -hmm. conducting any business there. But when we build this application for him, uh, he wants to route all his clients to this app. Is, is, you know, somehow, uh, so his business will not. It will be considered an e-business rather than a, a you know physical business, and and thus he he doesn't have to invest in any you know cash, uh, cash registers or you know they're, they're, he also in Sweden everybody that conducts any sales in a store or in a restaurant need to have a black box that is co uh, constantly connected to the Swedish IRS. Uh, because they they want to track every transaction uh, that a person conducts, you know. So it's really Big Brother is watching you uh, here in Sweden, uh, in that sense. Uh, but if he if he doesn't conduct any physical business, you know, uh, or accepts any money or anything, then he doesn't have to have that black box. So he saves uh, a lot of money on. It. So um, there are a different set of rules uh, that applies. If it's if his business is considered a, considered a you know uh, e-business only, uh, so that's why he uh, he would like to be able to uh, at you know some cases you know ask the client to uh, to fill in his information on a, on a laptop that stands in his in his shop basically. So does he already have like a merchant processor that he works with, or are there pre-existing modules that we would be integrating with? Uh, no, well, he he's using a Swedish uh, card processing service called iSettle, mm -hmm. uh, but that's a that's a very ad hoc solution for him. Uh, he he cannot, you know, it's connected to an iPad with a card reader and etc. You know, but he wants to remove all that from his store. He he wants all payments to be done over uh, over this you know application basically. And we've, uh, we've spoken about uh, Stripe as a, as a card process processing uh, solution uh, rather than the one that he's using today. I see. 
Yeah. And Stripe is very big and it's inter international and they, they conduct business in Sweden and you know the the transfers to you know from its merchant account to its bank account is is done in one or two banking days. You know, so it's it's uh, it's really fast and it's really, really convenient and it's also very cheap. I think it's approached two point eight percent for per transaction, which is really good. Person. Okay. Yeah. So, but but I would say that order creation it should be outside of this order workflow. I, I think we could have a separate story for that. This is this story is more about just reviewing the orders that come in through the through the API. Okay. So. Essentially, we just display a list of all the orders, and then he can potentially see um, what's their current status and you know, that. Is that, is that yeah. what you're saying? Yeah. Yeah. And also, we don't have a payment solution in place yet, so this will be up for refactoring later on when we do have payments. You know, so we need to add some sort of a status attributes to this order, you know, pending or approved, paid, mm -hmm. etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But uh, we won't be able to update those statuses uh, at this moment because we don't have a payment solution in place. Yet. That's what. That's how I reason. Basically. So this is a pretty straightforward story. You know, we write at a endpoint and uh, and just display the information in the active admin interface. Right. Thomas, what about? I mean, well, displaying this is just a matter of. Sorry, Go so ahead, Patrick. Thomas, um, I know we don't have a payment um, solution yet to bolt on to this story, but when we create the order, we have to figure tax in there, right? VAT and maybe other taxes? How are we mm -hmm. going to accommodate that? Is there a service we can call to return the tax items we need to pack onto the order? Yes. Well, uh, we could add some, some methods. I was thinking about... Uh, you know, adding there is this gem called Act as Shopping Cart, for instance. You know, and I think I wrote, wrote up a story about it, uh, uh, where you can you can deal with taxes and shipping uh, uh, information. You don't have shipping, of course, here, but you know. Uh, but but basically, what we can do is, uh, as as I was explaining and in some other meeting, all the prices needs to be displayed with value added tax included. Uh, and so we can calculate those. So at this stage, we don't need to deal with those taxes since since all prices would be considered including tax. You know, so we need to consider taxes when we are going to generate reports, and that comes in a, on a later stage because when you generate reports, you have to generate the net sale and the and the taxes separately, basically. Uh, but you know, for the interaction between the business and the clients. Taxes are not not uh, not an issue at this at this moment. Um, apart so from you, you know, when you when you generate a receipt or something, it, because there are some legal requirements that also that the value of the of the good of the product you sell you sell and uh, uh, the value added tax needs to be separated from the receipt as well. So, so the price, the order, the cost of the order is the sum of the item prices. Yeah. yeah. I, I do know, say, as a as a tourist, and you typically you get a receipt that tells you how much of the price went to that because you may be able to get a refund on yeah. that. Yeah. But yeah. Yeah. Of course, you you're, you're completely right. So, according to the Swedish tax law, when when you know when I go to a store and, and buy a, a you know a bag of milk, it says ten crowns, for instance. We, that's our currency it, on the shelf, right? Uh, mm -hmm. But on the receipt, it says eight crowns for the milk and two crowns for the for the tax, and it talks, uh, the total is ten. You know what I mean? But so, so when you when they display the price price for me in a store, that is included include the tax, but it is separated on the receipt. Uh, however, receipt is not a part of the story. Yeah, so. gotcha. Okay. So that will come in later. So I would say that. You know, I was, I was. It, it's a pretty straightforward uh, uh, workflow. Basically, you just you create an order and you have a has has many uh, relationship with items, and you just you know 
add items to, to, to your order, and you just sum up the, uh, the price and the amount of how, you know, you, perhaps you add two chickens and one beef, right? And so you just, you just calculate the, the total uh, for the order, and, uh, and that's basically it. At least at this stage. What are you reviewing there, Raoul? Are you are you uh, looking at what I messed up yeah. some, some commits? Or what? You know. Yeah, thank you. I was just reading the last commit on that um, on that PO. So perhaps if, if I should fire yeah. up the application again, uh, we can show uh, Michelle. If you haven't seen. Or perhaps you have seen the, the application running already. Uh, I have uh, not. So this is the uh, this is the login page uh, for that, and we have a admin user uh, that is created in the C style. So if I log in. I come to the dashboard and we can populate this some information or whatever. Uh, we haven't done it yet. Uh, so we can uh, here we can view products and we have uh, uh, products in Swedish. So, uh, right. So okay, so we have two products and we can create menus. And I have a menu for. Uh, I created a scope for current week and all menus that are are created in this system. But if we create uh, a menu for, uh, you know, Tuesday, for instance, and we can, and, you know, we, we set a, a date for it. And we've kept this start date and end date because you know we could we could potentially create a. Uh, a menu that is, you know, special of the week or something, you know. Yeah. Uh, but for the, in this case, we we're creating a menu for the, for Tuesday, and then we have menu items. We had we have two uh, defined products in this in this system now. So if I select beef and chicken, but you know, if I select both of them, both of these will be added to the uh, to the menu. Okay. Uh, and then we see here that you know. We have okay. Tuesday and a date. And Tell us about, sorry. About the selection of menu items, I it was a bit confusing to me today. I, I had to scratch my head to figure out that I had to hold the uh, shift button to select multiple. <laughs> Good. So Good maybe point. we should later on see how we can. Uh, Review that uh, that UI thing. Absolutely, just write up a story for it. You know, uh, uh, either as a chore or a, or a feature, since it's something that will involve okay. the user interaction. I would say it's a feature. Uh, you know, okay. absolutely. So, hey, oh. hey Thomas, mm -hmm. I have a question regarding what we're doing if there are dates on menus conflict. If we have two or three dates on the same day. The overlapping. Do we show all three menus, the aggregation of it, or do we? We're going to issue an error to the client saying you can't have conflicting mm -hmm. menus. Good. Yeah. Good, good, good. I, I, I thought about it, and there are other pitfalls here, but this is a good good question. So I would say that we need to write a validator or uh, have some method that that checks that you cannot have, uh, you know, two menus at at the same day. However, you are supposed to have. You, you should be allowed to have a overlapping uh, menus, kind of. You know, so if I if I want to, if we take this business case, uh, that I want to create a weekly special menu, as I mentioned before, you know, that runs from Monday to to yeah, you know, and but then I have I want to have. Uh, menus for for specific days, like menu, you know, you know Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Friday. So I, I should be allowed to do that, but I shouldn't be allowed to create two two menus called Wednesday, for instance, uh, with the same date. You know what I mean? Yep. Yeah. So that is definitely a, a feature that we need to to develop. 
Um, is it not already built in? I can't remember. Uh, for the name to be unique, is that not already validated in the model for the menu name? I don't think so. Let's okay. Let's do. Uh, validate the presence, but not uniqueness. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. Yeah. So, so we can have two menus that overlap on the same day because you may have recurring Wednesday menus, but you also have a weekly menu that includes Wednesday, of course. Mm -hmm. Is that what you're saying? If in that case, Thomas, we we might have menu item appearing in both menus. Do we just filter out that out when we aggregate to the user menu? Oh, that's interesting. Well, that's, I would say that we should. I mean, first of all, uh, you know, you, you shouldn't be able to add the same, the same uh, uh, product menu item twice to uh, to one menu, and that, that that is already taken care of because that's we we, we, build, we have that built in. Yeah. But, but then, of course, if the menus are overlapping. We should have a business a rule that says that the overlapping uh, menus should not contain the same menu items. You're completely right. Yes, they shouldn't be allowed to do that. Uh, yeah. See, because yeah, so I'm I, I'm using this scope for this week, right? Uh, I've created it today, uh, and this so we have this way of of noticing what menus are belong to the same period of time that is interesting for us from a, from a business perspective and we could run uh, some sort of validator on those items and just check whether there are uh, conflicting menu items on on those those menus that are overlapping mm -hmm. um, but this is something that needs to be uh, built. Yeah. So, Raul, are you getting this? Can you write up a story for it? <coughs> for the um, overlapping of dates and stuff. Uh, yeah, the overlap. The overlapping menus shouldn't be allowed to to uh, contain the same menu items. Basically. Okay. I'm thinking out loud here, so don't take my word for it yet. But this is what. Am I on the right no, track I'm, here? I'm, I'm, I'm actually thinking about re rephrasing it. Mm -hmm. um, Thomas, I, to me, it seems it's hard for the client to know before he creates the ultimate menu for the customer that he may have two or more menus with conflicting menu items. I would suggest when the client creates the customer final customer visible menu that we just alert him, hey, you've got these three menu items that occurred okay. on both of the menus you merged, and so they're only showing once, each item. Mm -hmm. Just as a notification. But Yeah. Yeah. That makes sense? That makes sense, yeah. That, that makes sense. Or what we could do also um, is, the, let's see if we edit this menu. Okay, so let's say that I'm creating this Tuesday, you know, 5th of, of May. Okay, and let's say that there is already a whole week menu that is overlapping this one, and that contains the chicken uh, menu item. So perhaps we could, we could disable this chicken, make it not not selectable. You know what I mean? Then we'd have to notify the client when he's confused as to why he can't add chicken. That we're not showing it because he's already got it on that day in yeah. another menu. It, yeah. You know. Now this is a hard one, but this yeah. Hard, I mean, the starting point for me might be just to say you can't have menus that overlap on days, to avoid the problem altogether. But that may be too restrictive to the client. It could be. We have to, we let we could we could validate that with him. Uh, see, when I was having lunch uh, last week, I was in a restaurant that had this this particular situation. So they have a. You know, a weekly special menu, and then they have daily specials. You know, so I, I don't know if he has that. Uh, so we have to we have to clear that with this particular, uh, you know, uh, chef or you know, business owner. But I think it, it could be a possible uh, use case uh, that could arise. But but to to start 
perhaps just to make it easier for us, what we could say we, we could create a validator that prohibits him from from having overlapping menus altogether. You know? Yeah. Um, see if see if that would be acceptable to him. Mm -hmm. That makes everything simpler for us downstream. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Okay. So Does anyway, this sound like a good description. Uh, let's have a look. Uh, could you read it out loud because it's too small for me. I can't read. <coughs> Okay, so the story goes like um, notify admin when creating conflicting menu. As an admin, when I create a menu, I would like to be notified that an existing menu already contains the item I'm adding, so that I don't create conflicting menus. Mm, yeah, I would say it makes sense, Patrick. Uh, Ro, would you could you read that one more time, please? Oh, quickly. I, I um, let me see. Yep. He has read now. So, as an admin, when I create a menu, I would like to be notified that an existing menu already contains the item. Sorry, the item I'm adding, so that I don't create conflicting menus. <laughs> so that's one. Approach row. The other one is that you cannot create a menu with a date that overlaps with any other menu. Yeah, we want one or the other of what mm -hmm. we're talking about. Okay. So, um, okay, so that's how I understood this one, but you know, which is not my native language. Perhaps I misunderstood something. But I, I'm totally with you, Patrick, on this one. Okay, so should I then rewrite this or just maybe I would say write, rewrite both? Right one, yeah. Okay. Okay. So when I create a menu, I'd like to be notified that um, the menu already exists for that particular day. Is that correct? Yeah, that would that would cover it. Okay. I would like to be notified that the exist. Oh, okay, that. Everybody's having connection problems today, huh? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, it seems so. This is better. That's better. When I create a menu, I would like to be notified of an existing menu on that same day so that I don't create conflicting menus. That sounds good to me. Thomas? Yeah, I'm, I'm down with that. Okay. Why am I not sharing my screen? Cool. Okay. Uh, so that's good. That's, that's good. Let's move this down there. It's okay that I move it down there, right? Are we going to do that now? No, no, no. It's it it, it, uh, it could be uh, a little down the road. I think. Uh, yeah, because right, you know, so let's, let's, uh, this is not a core core thing, even though it's important. It's not the the most you know. I mean, this is something that he can solve mm -hmm. by just being careful. Uh, but then again, you yeah. cannot expect users to be careful. So this is a good good <laughs> feature, but it's perhaps not the most important. <laughs> you know, software, software, software development would be so easy if there was no users. You know. <laughs> <laughs> this is true. <laughs> <laughs> like like most of the service, uh, you know. I wonder who. Yeah, yeah exactly. Hmm. All right. Okay. So uh, I was thinking. Should we yeah, vote on uh, this one? 
Who's playing with the phones? I don't know. It's not me. Hello? Yes, hello? Okay. That's Patrick, probably. Cool. Uh, so... All right, so... But while we Patrick is on the phone... On uh, uh, Raul, wh wh while Patrick is on the phone, I can just show you uh, that there is already some documentation in the uh, repository uh, for the end point. Mm -hmm. if you pull, when, whenever you pull that uh, API um, pull request, I've created a file called, I think it's called API documentation, uh, API endpoints.md, it's a markdown uh, file. So here you have a... Uh, a basic structure of you know how the uh, how the uh, JSON response from that endpoint looks like. So mm -hmm. in that case, you uh, probably you don't need me to, to send you something else. Uh, but if you want to yeah. have a look at it, you, know, you, you can. Uh, I don't know if you use Chrome, but if you do, you can install this extension called Postman. Yeah, I have Postman installed already. Yeah. Then you can just, that. yeah. Then, then you can just do a GET request to this v v1 slash menus, and you get that that uh, JSON response. Uh, hey guys, yeah. if I could interject here. I'm sorry about that phone situation. I I answered it because I have to leave in a few minutes to pick up my wife at the airport. That that oh. wasn't her. But I just want to let you know if if we need to vote, we sh maybe we should do it right away. Yeah, absolutely. Let's move ahead with the vote then. Uh, so Raul. Right. Let's take care of the vote. Okay, so the first story is going to be creating an order endpoint. Um, in order to be able to create or an order in the back end application, I would like to make a post request to an API endpoint and send the user's order. Okay. As a front end developer, in order to retrieve orders, I would like to make a get request and receive. Okay. Cool. Yeah. So we have two. It's essentially two two endpoints here: a post and a get. Yeah. Right. Kind of, yeah. Okay. Any more questions on that? So we all not for me. Patrick. And the the front end stuff is being done by Aaron. Is that right, or Raul? Are you doing that? Not clear to me who's doing that. Yeah, the I'm also working on that. Yes. Yeah, but yeah. this story is just about the the API endpoint. It's just about. Oh, okay. we can feed those uh, those okay. developers with some data. Basically. Yep, got it. Okay, I'll set that. Okay. So we all know the drill by now. I'm just gonna stop sharing my screen. Um, I'm not sharing my screen. So on the count of three, we're going to just enter all of these. And so are we ready? Yes, sir. Hello? OK. So one, two, three, enter. All right. Oh. <laughs> Thomas. Yeah, so uh, surprising. <laughs> uh, the reason why I wrote this as a, as a three is because there are you know two requests that are supposed to be made. So first of all, we want to to create that, and post requests are always hard to to do over API. Well, not hard, but harder uh, than just retrieving information. So uh, uh, so there are some that, you know probably I have to I have to make a uh, Good connection between the order and the menu items. I have to add some methods to calculate the, the prices, etc. Mm -hmm. And we have to pull in the user info in this request, um, you know. So uh, and test everything. So that's why I did it. It's a, there's a lot of details uh, in the end of the, the, the 
uh, make it a little harder. But I bow to the majority of the course, and as you guys have. I'm going to mute my phone now so that doesn't happen to me. No, 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 it's no problem. Um, well, you have the most experience, at least uh, relative to myself, Thomas, so I'm going to bow to your uh, experience, and I, I can increase my vote to a three, given right. your, uh, what it is. Thank you. Raul? Uh, I think I can do the same sense that you've been working mostly on the APIs, so I have no problem increasing mine to a three. Okay. The, the, the menu API endpoint was a little easier. First of all, I, I, I created this basic structure of it uh, uh, on the previous story, so I had a lot of things to go on already. And here I have to start from scratch. Mm -hmm. I would say pretty sick assessment. OK. All right, then. Um, the next one is the other workflow which is uh, displaying all the other information on the active admin interface. Mm -hmm. Am I correct? Okay. Yeah. Patrick, do you need any clarification on that one? Should we vote on this or there need to be some clarification? Um, not really. I think what we're doing is just exposing a portion of the active admin interface to the client so you can see orders entered. But it's not clear to me, though, that orders will show up in the active admin interface since they're not part of the admin objects we're managing with active admin. Do you understand what I'm saying? Or do we have to build a separate screen for that? Uh, well, what I will do is, uh, my thinking is that I, I, I add a, a new menu item, you know, called orders uh, with a, you know, an index where you can view uh, uh, like the name of the client and the date of the order, you know, I can create some scopes for, you know, unprocessed orders or current orders, etc. Uh, so he, he would be he would be see, seeing them in a grid like this, as he does with products and menus, basically. So, um, even though order is not an admin object to be managed by active admin, you'll tell active admin orders is something to be managed by it within, within its scope. And yeah, from yeah, that, yeah. a lot of okay. functionality. Got Absolutely. it. Okay. Absolutely. That helps. Thanks. Yeah. Also. Cool. All right. Uh, yeah. Do, do you still hear us, Raul? Yeah, it was breaking a little, but I uh, can hear you guys now. Okay, so let's let's do a quick vote unless any any more clarifications are needed. We can talk on Slack, yes. Okay. Okay. Okay, I'm I'm hearing I'm hearing everything as so far. Uh, so can we yeah, can we vote? Yep. All right. Yes. All right. So. I just stop sharing my screen and I can turn off my camera for a sec because that usually messes uh, the connection up. Um, and so, should I make a countdown? Sure. Yeah, sure. One, two, three, go. All right. Unanimous. Yes. Uh, this is a pretty straightforward story. Everything this. with active admin is hard. So. <clears throat> Two points. All right. All right. Um, was there anything else we needed to cover for today? Uh, no. Uh, you know, Patrick, whenever you yeah. and Safriti are done with the images, I just pull them in into the, the uh, uh, menu uh, endpoint. Uh, because this is something that we need to feed the front-end application with. So that's a good thing that you guys are working on that. And, uh, you know, whenever you have something uh, 
ready in terms of the front end. Uh, that would be awesome uh, if we could if we have a demo on that. Uh, All right, cool. Okay. I'll fix up something. Yeah, and, and just a side note, I sent an email to the client today for a meeting. So I'm just waiting for his feedback now. I saw that. I saw that. And since the internet connection is breaking up, I'm going to be working on those coveralls and uh, semaphore stuff, uh, perhaps later today or tomorrow morning. So I'll let you know when when uh, uh, when everything is set up, and we can do a continuous deployment uh, with with semaphore. Okay, uh, that works for me. Patrick, you, I, have you okay. done any any continuous uh, integration before? No, I have not. All right, I'll try to hook you up. Are you going to be around? Uh, oh, it's getting late. It's almost half past ten. Uh, okay, so I won't be I won't be able to do this tonight, unfortunately. But uh, perhaps tomorrow evening, and I can show you uh, some some stuff uh, in terms of you know test card, you know how to test uh, applications and push them out to servers. Uh, with yeah, I'd love to see that. Thank yeah. you. That's uh, uh, it's been a it, it's been a great thing for me. It's, you know, I can push out website one through the entire stack of, of servers in a matter of minutes uh, because we, we set it up. Uh, you know, it's better to spend a, a few hours setting that up and then you can just save shit lots of time later on. Mm -hmm. That's a good thing. Great, excellent. All right, okay, guys. Uh, I guess. Uh, that's it for, for, for tonight, right? Uh, yeah, that's it for me. All right. Uh, if there's anything else, I'll be on, on Slack, of course. Uh, so take it easy, guys. All right, okay. take care. Good night. All right. Cheers. Bye-bye. Good evening.